everyone, it's Sarah from Nova Scotia. Welcome back to Colorful Creations. I have a new project on the go now. I have this old desk, kind of rough shape. This is, I'm gonna have to fix that too, but I'm gonna take this apart, stand it down, clean it up, build these poles. I think there was, used to be a part for this, like a, a, a topper piece for a computer, which I'm not sure where that is. I actually found this on the side of the road. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna fill these, I'm gonna, you know, Clean it all up. You got this. Some of this, this finish is broken in places. So, you know, put something nice on it, right? And then I'll cover it with resin and um, put it back together, and hopefully it'll be awesome. All right. So, I'll take you through the whole thing. We can see what it's like in the end. Apart, so I'm just gonna do it with with it put together. That's fine. I'll I'll just tape it off, put some drop sheets around, and protect it. That's that'll work. I don't know if fill these little holes with resin. Wait till tomorrow when this is hardened, and then I'll just give the whole thing a quick sand and to rough it up, and then I'll prime it and do a pour. Now my plan here is to rough up the existing finish on the desk with really rough sandpaper so that I can leave that on there and cover it with paint and because I've roughed it up with sandpaper the paint will easily stick to it. I am covering with resin when I'm done but just to be safe it's good to rough it up first. Nobody wants peeling. So I made sure to get the edges really good because that's where peeling would start and the finish actually come off the edges here which was nice. I got right down to the wood and then I know I'm safe there. So this is sanded and cleaned up. I made sure I got it all off the edge here because if it's going to start peeling, it's going to start peeling there and lift things. I mean, it will be all covered with resin, but just to be safe. Um, I will need to do an extra coat of resin to fill these holes. You can see, so it always sinks back or, or seeps into the wood a little bit, and then you always need a second coat. So it's just that um, I had enough time today to sand it, so I got that part out of the way and I will do an extra coat of resin and prime it before I do a pour on it. I'm using a white gesso. I don't have much left of it. Gesso is a really common primer for acrylic pouring. It's nice to prep your surface with something, especially with wood. Your paint will seep into the wood, so this gives you a nice surface to start with, so it's nice and smooth. It's also great to use when you already have a coating on your surface like this one here, or if you're doing like a paint over. So here I'm adding my second coat of resin to fill these little tiny holes. All right, so it's been 24 hours. This is this is hardened and it's definitely been enough. It's raised above here, so I gotta get this extra off. So I have my heat gun to heat it a bit and then I'm gonna use this little scraper thing. It might work. And I also have a blade to try too. Well, that's the coating on top of the desk that I was hoping to just paint over, but I'm wondering if I should just peel this whole thing off now. Seems like the heat is making it that it's possible. I think I have to now that I got that off. <laughs> quick sand. I'm not going to bother dragging it outside just for that. I just want to make sure that the, it's all off. So I'm going to wear a mask because I'm inside. So 
so much for my white primer that I had to finish this with. At least I still have it on the edges and I'm gonna leave the bottom as is. Everything should be fine. I'm gonna wipe this down and then prime it with black. I'm all out of white. So I'm using the same brand as I had for the white. It's just um, handier, just, I don't know, I guess it's like a generic kind of thing I got on Amazon. It, was, it wasn't very expensive. I do have a little tutorial on doing gesso. I will put that link in the description for you if you want to see it. All right, so I'm getting ready to paint this. I'm gonna tape the whole thing off so I don't have to worry about that later, including um, all under here that uh, I'll have to do before I resin. So I'm just gonna do it all now and get that out of the way. Um, I think I'm gonna completely cover the bottom and do the top and probably do the top completely, like paint it and resin and then do the bottom, just because I don't want to take the chance of stuff falling down and ruining the bottom part if I put anything nice on that. So I'm going to take this little piece of sandpaper and just go over it. I see a couple of spots here, some, a couple of rough spots uh, where my primer wasn't perfect. And there, it's good. All right, so there's, it's all taped off. That's for the resin. Um, I always do two layers and make sure it's pressed down really good and make sure that the air is out because resin will get under there and make it really hard to get off. So I'll do this piece separate. And now, like I said, I want to do the top first, so I'm going to just cover the whole bottom. I have a plastic drop sheet. I bought a Dollarama for $1.50. You can't beat that. All right, so I'm all ready to pour on this. I'm going to do a few flip cups, I think. Make it easy. So. I have a bunch of paint here. I'll put all the names of the colors in the on the screen and in the description. The bottles are a mess. I don't look anything like that. Just gonna do a few cups. Hopefully that'll be enough. And then I'm gonna layer all these randomly, just kind of like light dark, light dark. I have a video made of how I mix my paints normally. I'll put the link in the description if you want to see that. It has my recipe and all that. I like to mix up a lot of paint at a time and store them in these squeeze bottles. I get these off Amazon. Um, I'll, if I can find the link, I'll put it in the description, but they hold 16, yeah, 16 ounces, which is perfect. I usually mix in red solo cups, which are I think 18 ounces, so it's, it's great. And then I store them and then just give them a shake when I'm ready to use them. And they're, they're good for weeks. So I'm just gonna flip these upside down. A lot dumped it on that one. Here's for the fun part. I'm gonna tilt this table.
looks really cool, I think. All right, I'll bring you in for a look. Got that glare. I'm trying to do it without this glare happening. That's better. Now this is gonna look awesome for a desktop. The colors are so vibrant and so pretty. You can see all these iridescence. Once this is dry and the resin is on, it's gonna have this wet look forever. All right, so here is the keyboard tray. I'm gonna sit it on a couple cups. I'm gonna do the same thing. Sometimes a little tap can help get a little more off the bottom. This is looking really cool. This is gonna look so good when it's dry resin and put together. Look at these iridescence. I put a coat of resin on this. My camera wasn't recording, unfortunately. That's okay because I'm gonna do the same thing with the bottom and I can show you exactly what I did there um, then. Um, I used a different kind of resin. I'm not as happy with it. It's, it's a little harder to work with and it would have been completely fine if my built, my room would have been really warm like it should have been, but, um, it's, it's fine. It's just, it was harder to get the bubbles out. So, and I just, I'm looking over it and there might be a couple tiny little spots that aren't perfect, but I don't, I'm not going to redo it because I don't know. I, I might. <laughs> it might drive me crazy and I might do it, but as of now, I'm not. So I'm just going to um, get the tape off that I put under here and get those um, the drips off. So we got these drips. So I'm just going to use a hairdryer or heat gun and, and warm those up a little bit and then scrape them off with a blade. And then the top will be done and then I can move on to the bottom part. There. Edges are clean. It's pretty much perfect. There is a little tiny spot right here. I'm hoping it doesn't drive me too crazy. Like you can't see it unless you really look for it. This is actually going to be a surprise gift for someone. I hope it doesn't drive me crazy that I redo it. Well, guess what? I'm gonna redo the top because that's just me. So I'm gonna give this, um, it's just a little, I don't know what happened there. And I actually see a little hair over here. So I'm gonna give it those a little quick sand with this really fine sandpaper. And then I will do another coat of resin. I hope this works. This is my first time using this kind of resin, like I said. I actually missed the spot. I see another spot there. See, now it's good I did this. This is a gift for my sister, and I bet she wouldn't have even noticed that, but it will drive me crazy. And every time I visit her, I'm gonna look at it, and I'm, I know I'm gonna end up putting it over to her. So, like I said, this is my first time using this resin, and it says to give it a, a sand, like that. So, hopefully it works. I'm just cleaning it up, getting all the dust off. I'm gonna tape this edge because I don't need any more resin coming down over that. So I'm gonna, hopefully it'll work. I'm gonna tape this off 
and then like almost like create like a dam, I guess, and then and then put it all over the top. Like you can't do you can't spot fix resin. You have to do the whole thing. And I'll just do a thin coat. Hopefully it doesn't make it worse. <laughs> I get a bunch more stuff in it, and then I re really regret this. Okay, so there. If you can see, it's almost just like a dull spot. So what should happen and what does work with the art resin. So um, it all like, it's rough because it's tiny, tiny, tiny little, little scratches, right? So the new resin that I put on kind of um, just runs into all those cracks and fills them all up and makes the whole thing smooth again. I'm gonna try to create a dam here with some tape, just leaving like maybe a quarter of an inch I don't want it to go too high because it, I'm going to take a chance of it like falling down and then laying in the resin and that would ruin it. I'm hoping this sticks. I'm sticking it underneath hoping that's going to help hold it. Like I don't care if it tips out this way, but I don't want it to fall in. I'm hoping to give this to her for Christmas. That's the plan. All right, so I have this all ready to go. It's clean. Hopefully no dust lands on it. I have this tent created over it. I think you can't really see it, but I um, used drop sheets and, and hung them over the lights. <laughs> and I got them taped back so that nothing um, falls in here when I'm gone. Now I'm using magic resin. Magic resin. Let's show you here. It's two bottles just like this. Um, it's like half the price of art resin, so I thought I'd try it. And I have it sitting here in a bucket of hot water because I know that it will mix easier and the bubbles will come out easier if it's good and warm and the room's warm this time. So hopefully I won't have any issues. So it's mixed one to one. Um, I'll be wearing a, a mask, a ventilator for this because it's, I mean, it says non-toxic, but, but I mean, everything, everything that has the chemical is toxic, so, and I'm indoors, so I'll be wearing a mask as so I won't be able to speak, so I'll be mixing it one-to-one, -one. I'm going to mix up a good amount and spread all over this with a gloved hand and then use a torch to get out the air bubbles and then I'm going to leave this tent down over it and leave it for 24 hours and come back out tomorrow and hopefully it's perfect. And then I'll be able to move on to the bottom part. I do have a full tutorial on doing resin. I'll put the link in the description. My tutorial is done with art resin, but it's done exactly the same. It's just that magic resin is a little more tricky with you have to have it warm first. The really important stuff to remember with resin is to use a, a ventilator, a respirator, to protect your lungs. Um, it, it's mixed one to one and spread it on evenly. It's mostly self-leveling. Every resin that I've used is self-leveling, so it will sort itself out. You just gotta make sure that the whole surface is covered. Like you can't have empty holes here and there. Just cover the whole thing right to the edges, and then you gotta get the bubbles out with a heat gun or a torch or some type of a heat source. Get all the bubbles out, go over it a few times, make sure they're all out, and then make sure it's sitting in an area where it's completely level, for one, and then you don't want it to be disturbed or have dust or anything flying into it. And make sure the room is 20 degrees Celsius and then leave it sit for 24 hours and it will harden and it will, it will cure after 72. All dry, it's perfect. Um, really glad I redid it now. <laughs> this is good now, I'm really happy. And the edges turned out really good. I'm glad I took that the tape off there the last, it was like a couple hours after I put the resin on and it's perfect. All right, so here I am ready to do the bottom pair. First, we gotta cut this, this stuff off here. I should have a better knife than this. And there's actually still wet paint in there. That's craziness, that's been weeks. Well, I guess it works because there's nothing, there's no paint that then made its way in there. All right. So I'm going to use all the same colors as the top. I'm going to do a bunch of random cuts. Okay, I 
That should be enough. So I have, I'm going to use gold as a glow extender. It's Montmart. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it. It's kind of like, it's more like, it's just too light. It's almost like a creamy color. So I had a bunch already mixed up that I want to kind of get rid of. So I'm going to use that and I didn't have any extra white mixed up and I'm just lazy, I guess. So do I'm just going to dip dump these upside down randomly. We'll let them sit for a minute. It's definitely not as comfortable sitting on the floor like this. I'm going to drag these. Pretty designs. All right, I see lots of bubbles popping up, so we might get some interesting cells happening. I'm gonna give this a little torch. Now it's gonna be interesting trying to tip this. Okay, here we are. Get that glare off the light. Try to go from the other side. And of course, I still have it, but this turned out really pretty. So I will let this dry for a few weeks and cure, and then put resin on like the top. And then I'll show you when it's all done. Last little bit of resin and it's done. I'm so excited to give this to her. She's gonna love it. She better anyway. If she doesn't, I'm keeping it myself. <laughs> So the resin is done. If you're wondering why I'm in my kitchen, I'm kind of in between I'm moving into a new place and I don't have my art room set up yet. So <laughs> this is gonna have to do for now. So the resin turned out really good. The bottom, you could see that I had this tape along the edge here. I, I didn't um, video when I took that off, but I just I actually let the resin sit for about 45 minutes. I found 45 minutes so it just started to harden a little bit and then I pulled the tape off and let the excess kind of run over the side, and then I just run a gloved hand along there and smooth it out. And then and I already had that taped off, so there is a few bumps on there that I will have to get that off next. And then the same thing with the uh, the, the keyboard tray. I have these bumps here, so I'm just gonna take my heat gun and heat that a little bit, and then it'll help pull it off. And then whatever doesn't come, I'll just, again, heat it and use a blade and scrape it. I'll show you that quickly. So, and then the only other thing I need to do is attach my, um, I got these cookies up on Amazon because the, um, the drawer trays were trays, not, they're not called trays, uh, gliders, I think these things were kind of bent up. So I threw those away and I got to pick these up on Amazon for, I think $13. I may have been able to get a better deal at a store, but I didn't really feel like going and looking around and trying to find them and Amazon is just way too easy. So I'm going to clean up these resin bumps and attach these um, on there and then actually I might not even have to attach them 
No, I think I'll have to take those off and put the new ones on. So we'll do that and then it will be ready. All right, so I have these off. They come off pretty good. I'm just gonna tip it up actually. Carefully. And I'm just gonna use my heat gun and a blade and I'm going to, I have it taped so hopefully it'll come off in one piece and I won't scrape too much of the resin bumps. I just wanna get these, these little bumps of resin. I mean, you're not gonna see it too much because it's underneath, but I want it to be nice and it's a good. <laughs> very well. I just had to make sure I took my time and it peeled right off. I don't have to use the blade. Take this back up. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the, the drawer, the, the tray. Got to get the resin bumps off the back of that. Now if I had just done this resin like a day ago, it wouldn't be cured completely and I would lay something like a, a towel or something soft underneath it to protect it. But it's been, this has been done for weeks now, so it's okay. Perfect. So, works really well. I just, you know, as long as you put two layers of tape, I use a good quality tape, so the resin doesn't seep through and stick to the wood, then you can just peel it right off, as long as it's heated. So now, I'm ready to put the, uh, the piece, the door, tra door tracks, door, I guess that's what you call them. I think I'll have to drill new holes to that resin. Now these come marked right and left, thankfully. <laughs> this is the right one. So this is the piece that attaches to the desk itself. And this one goes here. Now I want to make sure, okay, this is how it will go. So this needs to attach here. And I would think that they need to be perfectly even. I hope this works. The pencil's not exactly gonna mark the uh, resin, so I'm gonna use a Sharpie. I have these where I want them. Now, there's a lot of holes, so I really need that many. Let's tie those through. Six per side. You gotta do two pieces, so three. Okay. Okay, so the instructions say one eighth. So I'm gonna use the one eighth bit for the drill. Try it, I guess. Let's try it. The resin is still fresh enough. I don't want anything to fall on it. I'm actually really glad I saved the, the bolts from the, the one I took off there because the screws I have won't work for this. All right, I got them attached. I had to improvise and use the bolts that came off the piece I took off of there and then I was able to get it to work. So let's just see if it works here. Something's catching. Oh, there's a screw that looks like it's sticking out a little bit. Take that middle screw out, it's not needed. See the other side. And that one's not catching. So, perfect. It works. This is so, oh man, this is so nice. She is gonna love it. All right, it's finally done. I just want to show you quickly here. 
I'd like to show you outside if, if I find a nice day, but the sun hasn't been coming out at all. So I set up some lights here in the kitchen so I can, we can have a look at it before I give this to her. I'm so excited. You have no idea. This turned out really nice. Look at these, these cells or lacing, I guess you call this. This, the shimmering metallics and iridescence are just beautiful. I hope I get to show you this natural light because it really brings it out. I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy I did that extra resin to redo the, the top. I know it was a lot of work, but I'm just, I'm so happy I went with, with all of it. It was really worth it, especially since it's a gift. I know she'll really, really like it. And if not, I get to keep it. <laughs> I'm so happy I found a nice day outside that I could show you this before I gave it to her. This turned out so nice. I am so excited to give this to her. You have no idea. I've been working on this thing for months and trying to keep it a secret. And I, I like tell her everything. So what do you think of this? The iridescence just turned out absolutely gorgeous. All the metallics, everything is just, oh, it's just shimmering in the sun. I can't even... My phone is not picking up how amazing this looks. Like, honestly, you got to see this in person. These colors just work beautifully together. And I'm really glad I bought new drawer tracks for that, for that um, slider, the, the keyboard tray there. Cause it, I love that it, the whole thing works now. The bottom turned out just beautiful. I think it's a little bit more vibrant than the top to be honest, but overall it is amazing. You're not going to find this anywhere else. And I hope I don't see this on Facebook Marketplace because I'm going to be so sad. <laughs> Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.